Hello, welcome to this channel Gain Java Knowledge and today in this video we are going to learn how to create Spring Boot REST CRUD API using PostgreSQL database and in this video we will also learn how to define configuration in Spring Boot application to connect with PostgreS database and here we will also learn how to define entity and repository in Spring Boot application and how to create Spring Boot REST controller to process HTTP request and how to use Spring Data JPA to interact with PostgreSQL database ok let's get started so first we will open our browser so here I will just type start.spring.io and here we need to select the project type here I am going to create Maven project and here we need to select language Java and here we need to choose Spring Boot version here I am going to use latest version 2.7.5 and here we need to define the artifact ID and next we need to add the dependencies to create the rest api we need to add spring web spring web maven dependencies and we also need to add jpa to interact with postgres database and with which database we want to connect we also need to add the driver for that database so here we are going to connect with postgres sql driver so now we will generate so here now we will extract this folder now we will open this project and just copy the path from here and now we will go to IntelliJ so here we will select new project and here we need to select the maven and we'll choose the java version which sdk we want to use click on the next and here we just need to paste the path of project click on finish So this is the, our Spring Boot project structure that we can see here in source main Java. This is our main class and inside resources we have they have defined application dot properties file that we will use to define the configuration of PostgreSQL SQL database. So first I will open this application dot properties file. To connect with PostgreSQL database, we also need to first install this database at our system. So we will go to this link and from here we will download the PostgreSQL latest version. I have already downloaded this one. So I will not download it again. Now we will go back to our IntelliJ ID and after installing this we will go here and search for pg admin so this is the pg admin for his postgres sql database so here it's asking for the master password that we have that i have set during installation and this is a server so here we can see postgresql 15 and inside database i have created my own database user database just by clicking on here and can click on create database so i have already created user database and inside user database i have created one schema that is my schema so we will click here and can create more schemas and inside my schema i have created one table that is user table so we can see here inside tables 
so so here we can execute our select query and can see the records in user table so this is our user table in this table we have four field id name city and password so now we will go back to our Spring Boot application and we'll define the configuration to connect with PostgreSQL database. So here I will just paste this configuration. Here this is our data source URL JDBC PostgreSQL localhost the port number that I have de defined during its installation and I have created one database that is user database that we can see here user database so i have created manually and next we have defined the username and password that i have defined during postgresql installation time and here we can define hibernate ddl auto none and next i have defined hibernate sql format sql true and show sql so we can print the queries in the logs Next, I will create controller class and will create CRUD APIs and will check how it's working, it's connecting with database or not. So first I will create one controller package and the next I will create one service package. And one package will be entity package. one model package we can create and one we will create for repository so first i will create our model class or entity class so here i will go and create one new class that is user entity and entity class i will define the annotation that is at delete entity and here i will define one more annotation that is at grid table and inside this annotation i will define the table name that we can check in our database so here we can see the table name is user so here we can see the table name is user and our schema name is my schema so under my schema there is user table so we'll go to our entity class and here we have defined the table name and here we will define the schema name and schema name is my schema and next we need to define these four properties first is primary key private long id and second we need to define the columns private string name private string password private string city so these are the four properties that we have defined and in our user table that we can see here id is begin name city and password are character type so in our model class it will be string and here we can use at the rate generated value annotation to generate the primary key and here we need to define the strategy so here we will define generation type auto and next we need to generate the setter getter methods so here i will go to generate and select getter and setter for which property we want to generate we want to generate for all so select all click ok and next we can create constructor
so here I will select constructor how many properties we want to use so I want to use all the properties so we'll select all and we can also we also need to create zero parameterized constructor so we'll remove all this and this is our entity class is ready so now we will go to our controller class controller package and we'll create one controller class user controller and here i will define annotation at the rate rest controller at class level so spring application will understand and create the bean for this class and we can also process our HTTP request to this class and here I will use request mapping annotation to define the request URL so it will be the base URL path so here I am defining at class level we can define user and here I will create service class so here I will create one interface user service this will be the interface and next we can create the implementation class for this interface so we'll create one more package that is implementation package and inside this package we will create one more class that is user service impl and this class will implement user interface user service interface and next we can create the repository layer and inside repository package we will create one user repository class so this layer will interact with the database and we'll fetch or save and we'll perform all the DDL operation so this will be the interface and it will extend JP repository and here we need to define our model class for entity class user entity and the second will be the data type of primary key so we can check here the data type for primary key is long so here we can define the data type long so here we can see our repository is ready so now we will go to our controller class and here we will create all the api that can perform card operation like can create create api update api delete and fetch so here i will just paste all the endpoints here i have already created so one for delete one for put means update and one for post that we will use to save the user and to fetch the record we will use get mapping so we will import this all import this one import this class also and now how we now we need to import list interface and here we need to import our service layer so here we have defined all four endpoints one will be used for get all the user and second will be used for get the user by id and third endpoint will be used to save the user into database and fourth endpoint we will use to update the user and fifth will be used to delete the user from database so now we will go to our user service interface so here i have defined these five methods and we need to import these classes now i will go to implementation class 
and here we just need to add unimplemented methods and here we just need to import our repository class so here i will define at the rate auto while denotation and private user repository user repository and here at class level we need to define the annotation at the rate service so spring boot application will understand and create the bean for this class and store into container and next we need to add the implementation for these methods so this method is used to get all the user find all and find by id will be used to get the user by id so it will be used to fetch specific user and third is to save the user we will just call user repository dot save method and it will save the user into database and next we will use to update the user so first we will check if user is present in database then only we will update otherwise it will throw exception user not found so we will check if we are passing any field in our request body then only it will update if the field is not available in request body then it will not update the field so we have added here null check or empty and next this is the delete user by id so if user is available then then it will delete if user is not present in database then it will throw exception user not found so this is our application has ready so we can run and test our application here application failed to start because i think we have added java version 17 in our pom.xml so we will go to our pom.xml file so here we can see pom.xml file and we'll just open and check the java version because i have not installed java version 17 at my system so i will use java 11 and we'll run this application again So here we can see our application has started now we'll go to postman and test our services so here first i will test get all user and we'll execute localhost 8080 slash user rest endpoint so it will fetch all the users from database so we have three users so here we can see these three records are here like this we can test user by id here we just need to pass the id of user so like this so like this we can test delete user by id so here i have passed four so user deleted successfully we have three records in database now we will get so here we can see it will be show two dot records because we have deleted one record so here now we can see there is two or three only two ids are here id3 and id2 if i will delete one more id and again we'll execute get all user so here we can see only one user record is available with id2 so like this we can perform update operation so here we can see our user id is 2 and the name has some spelling mistake so we can update the record so we can update the username like this so here we need to pass the id of user so user updated successfully 
now i will get all user and here we can see our record has been updated successfully thanks for watching this video